Welcome to MA3D1. This video is about parental boundary layer equations. So, in the previous lecture, the week 9 lecture, I introduced you to the boundary layer around the flat plate. And the derivation I'm going to present today is motivated by that, but it does not apply only to the boundary layer across the flat plate. In fact, it applies to a a broad range of problems which have this boundary layer structure and by the structure I mean the flow in one direction is a function of is a very rapid function of the coordinate along uh, perpendicular to that direction for example in this case u which is the component of velocity along the x-axis changes rapidly with y over a length delta. We don't know what this length is, but we just know that the flow changes rapidly with delta. And the scale, the similar scale for variation of flow along x is the length of the plate L. And the equations that we are going to derive apply to the situation when delta is much, much smaller than L. Formally, we would take the limit as uh, delta over L goes to zero, and this is written as delta over L much less than one. That's the same as saying this fraction, this ratio approaches zero. Okay. So under, this, under such circumstances, the governing Navier-Stokes equations simplify to something called the parental boundary layer equations. And that's what we are going to derive in this video. So the idea is, let me change the color here, yeah, is that the governing equations, if I write it in component form, in Cartesian components, two dimensions, and let's ignore gravity or any kind of body force. This is the x component and similarly the y component u del v del x plus v del v del y that's the inertial term representing a direction and I have del u del x plus del v del y equals zero for the incompressibility condition. Now, what we want to do is uh, estimate the size of each of these terms and uh, show that some of these terms are actually much smaller and then simplify these equations. Those simplified versions will be the parental boundary layer equation. But in order to estimate the size, what we need are the characteristic scales. We saw these characteristic scales when we discussed uh, very early on the continuum hypothesis for fluids. We also discussed it when we had when we discussed uh, dimensional analysis, and this is a, a real application of characteristic scales where we have to think about what the characteristic scales are. We need the characteristic characteristic scales for x, y, u, v. P and possibly time. If you, we are going to consider a steady flow, but if the flow is unsteady, then we have to consider the characteristic scale for time because we will consider steady flow. These terms do not appear for us. So we'll have to uh, con determine the characteristic scales for x, y, u, v, and p. All right. So let's uh, discuss them. For x, the characteristic scale is L. And I'm going to write this as x scales as L, which means wherever you see an x or a partial de derivative with respect to x, 
uh, we replace it by L or uh, division with L. Right. And uh, th that means that you have to travel a distance L along the X direction before you see an appreciable change in the variable of your interest. What does appreciable change mean and what does yeah well in principle this characteristic scale could depend on the variable of your interest for example the horizontal velocity may change with one uh, on one scale versus the vertical velocity or the pressure uh, so in principle you could have the characteristic scale for an independent variable depend on the particular dependent variable that you're talking about because what we want to do is replace things like del u del x with some simple ratios right and then what you substitute for x in the denominator here could depend on, depend on what's in the numerator but it so happens that for this problem and for most problems those complications don't arise and when they do arise you uh, you have to pay special attention uh, so we, we will say x scales with L we will say y scales with delta because the flow sticks to the wall at y equals 0 and when you go a distance delta away from the wall the flow is comparable to the free stream u and so one would conclude that the flow changes appreciably over a length scale delta. The horizontal velocity scale is determined by the free stream. When the, if the free stream doubles, the flow will double far away. And the scale of the flow to go from zero to what quantity will, will be uh, dictated by the free stream velocity u. And therefore, the x component will be uh, will scale with u, but the y component will not scale with u because we expect the y component to be much smaller than the x component. Watch the video for week nine lecture, and you will understand. So we don't know what to substitute here, so we'll substitute capital V. And for pressure, we can either substitute capital P or can substitute rho u squared. This sort of expression, for example, would come from Bernoulli. If you don't substitute this and keep it generic in terms of capital P, you will determine that P must be equal to rho u squared. Okay. So now, let me add some space. We are going to estimate the strength of each of these terms. And I'm going to write the strength below the term. So for example, rho u du dx will be rho u squared over L. Rho v du dy will be rho u capital U capital V over delta dp dx will be p over l. I won't substitute the rho u squared for p yet. I'll show you that it comes out. Mu u over l squared, mu u over delta squared. Similarly, if I write rho u v over l, rho v squared over delta, p over delta, mu v over l squared, mu v over delta square and u over l v over delta and when whenever we have a situation like this always start with the conservation equation for the conservation of mass and examine its consequence there are only two terms and these two terms must balance each other which means u over l must be equal to v over delta and that gives us V. It's U times delta over L. And remember, 
delta over L was much smaller than 1, was a small number, so V is much smaller than U because of the factor of delta over L. Now if we take this and we plug it into the equation above, uh, this the first term becomes rho u squared over L times delta over L. The second term becomes rho u squared over delta times delta squared over L squared. And you see these two terms are equal for factor cancel the factor of delta. The third term is P over delta and uh, the fourth the fifth terms are mu delta over L times U over L squared and mu over delta squared delta over L U yeah. And you will see that these terms are not equal, these two terms. In fact, because the second term here has a delta squared in the denominator, where the first term has an L squared, you can generically, oops, sorry, you can generically neglect the second term because delta over L is much less than 1 relative, sorry, the first term relative to the second term. But the second term will always be much bigger than the first. So this one we don't need to carry around. And uh, we are left with two terms on the left hand side that have the same strength P over delta and mu delta over L. Uh, now you will notice and I have already indicated this to you that uh, P will turn out to be rho u squared right? and in order to I'm, I'm leapfrogging here a bit okay but let's say P is rho u squared if P is rho u squared this term here is P over delta is rho u squared over delta the left hand side term is rho u squared over delta times delta squared over L squared. So the terms on the left hand side are much smaller than the dp dy term than this term. So I can neglect the left hand side also because rho u squared over delta times delta over L squared is much less than P over delta and if you notice the second the only remaining term on the right hand side it scales with that so now we will have to compare um, P over delta to so that's P over delta to mu over delta times u over l. So after cancelling one, one factor of delta, you'll have rho u squared on the left hand side, mu u l on the right hand side, and uh, this, you can neglect this term if mu over rho u l is much less than 1. Okay, and I'm going to show you uh, this will happen a little later and you have to leapfrog that's just the nature of uh, calculations of this type uh, we'll find out we'll determine later that this is nothing but delta over L squared and when we find this we will find the reason to neglect this term, the D2 
v dy squared as well. So the consequence, I'll write the consequence in red of this equation is that the only the dominant term is dp dy is zero. So after all is said and done, we are going to find that dp dy is zero. Just to keep track of all the things I have assumed, I have assumed that p uh, goes like rho u squared, t scales as rho u squared, and delta over l squared is mu over rho u l. Okay, so those are the two things, and I, I'll start this, these assumptions, and I'll come back to the star later. But consequence is that is that dp dy is zero. Now you come to the first equation, the x momentum equation, and uh, as soon as you substitute v over delta as u over l, you note know that these two terms are equal. So the left hand side is rho u squared over l. The first term on the right hand side is p over l. I attempt and equate this to the first two terms on the left hand side, and I get uh, use black p is rho u squared. So that's, that verifies my, one of my assumptions and one of the assertions that I have been making so far. It also makes sense because the pressure is expected to vary by an amount rho u squared because that's the stagnation pressure. I'll um, refer you to, I think it was uh, example sheet five or six where you did, where you worked out the stagnation pressure, which was half of rho u squared. So it's comparable to rho u squared. So we have now ascertained that these two are the same strength. Sorry. And now what remains is uh, the two viscous terms. I've already argued with you that the x derivatives are always smaller than the corresponding y derivatives. So this is this term we neglect because delta over L is much less than one. And so what remains of uh, the X momentum equation is, we'll write it in red, rho u du dx plus v du dy equals minus dp dx plus mu d to u dy square. And what remains of the mass conservation equation is the whole thing. So far, I have uh, managed to argue what the simplified version of the equation is but this part is remaining and to convince that that is correct now I equate the strength of the viscous term with the strength of the other terms and I have mu u over delta squared equals rho u squared over L and you solve this for delta you get delta over L is uh, mu over rho u l square root and that verifies this part of the assumption. So sorry for the mess I have created on this slide but this is what explains all the uh, strengths of each of these terms how they compare with other terms in the same equation and what the result is at the end. So let me now summarize the result and then rho u del u del x plus v del u del y is minus dp dx plus mu del 2u del y square. This is the x momentum equation. Zero is minus dp dy 
this is the one momentum equation and del u del x plus del v del y equals zero this is com incompressibility or mass conservation and the uh, corresponding uh, conclusions are that the boundary layer thickness delta must be L times rho no, not, so, not rho, mu over rho u L to the one half and you can compare with what we had in the uh, in, in a hand waving uh, derivation which was square root of nu x over u if I substitute L for x you will con uh, uh, conclude that these are the same expressions so let me take a break now so to summarize these equations here these three equations here are called the Prandtl boundary layer equations and we are going to use these equations to um, approximate the flow around a flat plate the in, and the influence of the no-slip boundary condition. So this concludes this video on uh, the derivation of the Prandtl boundary layer equations. Uh, the, for, a cl for a cleaner and more organized um, presentation of this derivation, you can look at the notes. But if uh, the argument for any of the terms being uh, estimate of the size of any of the terms or their comparison with other terms is unclear, then I've presented all the arguments in this video. If you have more questions, do feel free to write to me. Uh, I will see you again next time in the next live session or in the next video.